So I um, wanted to thank you uh, for, for taking time out of your Sunday to be here and introduce everybody to Sadie Minkoff. Um, a lot of people ask her, and she'll have much more insight on it, but um, in terms of uh, fertility and acupuncture and how they go hand in hand or if they go hand in hand and that sort of thing. So um, just want to, number one, welcome Sadie. Sadie Minkoff is a leading integrative reproductive health expert, say that five times fast, acupuncturist and founder of Sage Acupuncture here in Austin. Over the past 20 years, she's empowered thousands of women to improve their health and grow their families. Sage was one of the first clinics in the country to focus exclusively on fertility, and she works in collaboration with um, both physicians and patients. I think a lot of times people think it's like Western medicine versus Eastern medicine versus, hey, we can work together and, and have some positive outcomes. Um, and so Sadie takes a holistic and personalized approach uh, that creates the best possible conditions for conceptions. And um, I, I didn't see Sadie personally. I didn't know her at the time, but I can tell you um, when I when we first started going through infertility or the thought of it, I went to acupuncture and, you know, I had challenging cycles and all that in the, at the beginning and um, like three or four treatments and all of a sudden it was gone. My husband's like, you need to stay on that. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm a big fan of acupuncture. Um, I've seen the, the results um, and as many of our board members and friends and colleagues have. So with that, Sadie, I'd like to turn it over and welcome you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much and thank everyone on the Fertility Foundation of Texas. This is such a wonderful summit you've put together and all the work that you you do is just amazing to support to support the community. So thank you. And um, as uh, Heather said, my name is Sadie Minkoff and I am one of the co-founders of Sage Acupuncture in Austin, Texas. And we specialize in supporting women from preconception through pregnancy, as well as many women's health issues. So what I'd like to discuss today is what is acupuncture and how to support fertility, how acupuncture can be part of your fertility journey specifically, and how to find a practitioner. Awesome. Yeah. So you have a PowerPoint ready to go, correct? I do. All right. Well, that looks fancy. <laughs> Here, we'll try that again. Okay. Ooh. Might just be the connection bringing up your PowerPoint. So. Okay. I don't, and I, I don't need the PowerPoint either. If, if that's better for you. Um. Well, let's see if it it shows up. Are you seeing it on your screen yet, or no? No. Well, how about we go with your smile? <laughs> <laughs> perfect. That's that's perfect. Um, yeah, and I I, um, I don't know if you had a video as well that you wanted to share. Um, I do. How, do you want me to share it now, or do you want me to do it after your? Either way is fine. Is it better after? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it right after. Okay. Perfect. Great. So um, again, my name is Sadie and I am one of the owners at, at Sage Acupuncture. And today I'd like to talk about traditional East Asian medicine, which is actually the longest continuously practiced system of medicine. So it dates back thousands of years. And acupuncture is one element of that system, which includes things like um, food as medicine and exercise um, and lifestyle recommendations as well as acupuncture itself. So it's based on an approach to health called holism or holistic medicine, where we take the entire being into consideration when diagnosing and treating disharmonies or illness, as opposed to separating the body into parts. So by observing the, the intricate way that our bodies respond to their environment to keep us in homeostasis or balance, um, we can learn that using these tiny hair fine needles in 
acupoints or specific places on the body, we can tap into our innate mechanisms of healing. So in other words, we are eliciting a very specific response from the body. And in that way, we can promote health. So similarly, if you introduce any sort of small sensation to the system, we will respond. Like if you walk into a very cold room, your body will react and try to warm us up and bring resources to our core. So, so that's how we utilize that innate healing capacity of the body through acupuncture. So how does acupuncture support fertility? Again, we're triggering the body's wisdom right, to work optimally. And, um, and, you know, in modern times, we feel like we know an awful lot about health, but truly a lot of it is actually still very mysterious. So we know that acupuncture works, but we're still investigating sort of the mechanisms of action of how it works. What we do know is that it does a few important key things for health, like increased circulation, um, it calms inflammation and can address our stress response. So circulation specifically, I think can be deceptively simple, um, but our blood is the messenger. It will, it's what brings hormones to their target sites, right from the brain all the way through our bodies to our reproductive organs. And it gets all the good stuff in, it brings oxygen and nutrients to all the tissues of the body, and it takes away waste. So this is important when we're looking at things like advanced maternal age or diminished ovarian reserve specifically. Um, I think it's important to understand that if your eggs are already chromosomally not viable, there's nothing that really anyone can do to bring them back. However, um, about three or four cycles before an egg is retrieved in an IVF cycle or ovulates naturally, it sort of comes out of a resting state and there's all this rapid cell development and cell division. And so we feel like that's a key place where we can bring that nourishment to the follicles and, and eggs and help them to become not only mature embryos, but take home babies. Um, and inflammation is another sort of key component to all kinds of disharmonies that, that we experience in our modern era of denatured food and sort of this perpetual state of stress. So we're like always in a fight or flight state and this causes inflammation, but many of these uh, underlying issues also contribute to delayed conception. So this is things like endometriosis, where we know that the tissue that should be inside the uterus is found outside of the uterus, often in the abdominal cavity. And there are always, our bodies are trying to sort of respond to this disharmony. And there are always uh, inflammatory cytokines associated with endometriosis. So we're looking at why does one body allow this to happen even after surgery, it can come back and another's wouldn't. And we're trying to get back to that state of um, reduced inflammation and receptivity. Things like PCOS are associated with low grade systemic whole body inflammation and increased oxidative stress. So at their foundation, we're again looking at that, that body response. And an interesting thing that they're looking at more and more is endometrial receptivity or inflammation in the uterus that is potentially inhibiting implantation. So stress in general that acupuncture is so good at supporting is an interesting topic in relation to fertility. Um, so there was a 2014 study out of Ohio State University where they followed 400 women and showed that people with higher biomarkers for stress had a 29% decreased chance of pregnancy within a year. And they also went on to have double the chance of, of having struggles conceiving and infertility. So 
we need more research in this area, certainly, but even if you don't go into the process of trying to conceive with a lot of stress on your plate, certainly just the process brings with it often an enormous amount of stress. So to put this in perspective, um, depression levels that patients experience with delayed fertility have been compared to patients who have been diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. Um, and really, you know, despite the prevalence of infertility, which we know is one in eight couples, so you are not alone, uh, the majority of people still don't feel comfortable sharing their process with their friends and family. I think you just discussed that quite a bit. So it can be on top of everything else, a very isolating and um, lonely struggle. So when you're preparing for this marathon of fertility, it's a really good idea to have in place some support tools like acupuncture to help get you through. And um, in fact, one prospective cohort study from 2008 showed that the number one reason that people dropped out of IVF cycles was actually due to the associated stress. So it can make the process when you have the support in place that much um, easier or you know, more workable for you. And you're able to then stick with your treatments and potentially be more successful when otherwise you wouldn't be. Um, Diane Credenda is a friend and a colleague of mine, and she does acupuncture research. And she identified, this is a quote, that by adding acupuncture to IVF, there were more pregnancies, fewer miscarriages, fewer ectopic pregnancies, and more take-home babies. And one couple out of four would not have to repeat an IVF cycle. Um, so an acupuncture is really just a lovely reset to your system where you simply receive the treatment and feel better as opposed to having to exert effort to get results. And it puts the body in a state of receptivity as opposed to, um, you know, fight or flight, which we've talked about. And that is synonymous with a fertile state. Okay. So preparing for conception and supporting fertility. So these days, um, we're really just taught in our society that working harder gets us better results. And really often that is, in fact, the case. But when it comes to fertility, we also want to take the time to support healing through rejuvenative practices. Um, so as we mentioned, acupuncture is part of a system of medicine that focuses on the mind-body continuum holistically. So we want to attend to all of the different pillars of health. And this is often quite a balancing act between showing up for all the appointments and learning all the things and, you know, attending to our fertility in that way with, you know, um, taking the time for our, ourselves to really heal and process appropriately. Okay. So what we address at SAGE is nutrition and movement and rest and stress management, as well as supplements and joy. And so here by joy, I mean um, continuing to live your life fully and being available and able to cope with the full spectrum of emotions and challenges that come your way. So I personally often advise my patients to sort of keep it real Right. And so that if you need to have a good scream or a good cry or a hug, that you ask for that. Um, but it also includes allowing yourself to be hopeful. Okay. So what we assess, um, again, is nutrition. And when we look at nutrition that is specific for fertility, the current thinking trends towards predominantly a plant based whole foods approach with lots and lots of organic fresh fruits and vegetables, some whole grains, clean, lean meats, good fats like avocados, and, and plenty of water. So very much um, like what is known as the Mediterranean diet, if you're familiar with that. And we combine in our practice this information that we know from research with our traditional wisdom that looks at each individual's needs 
as well as the property of the food that we're eating. And then we can give very unique recommendations based on your personal situation. So when I say property of foods, I mean the impact that they have on the body. So a very, very simple um, example of this is comparing mint to ginger because they're both digestive aids, but one has a cooling effect on the body and one ginger has a warming effect. So they're going to be appropriate for different circumstances and different people at different times. Another example would be how some people need to focus on nutrients and minerals that are going to nourish their blood and eat things like pumpkin seeds or beets that are high in iron. And other people are going to have to incorporate more fiber or healthy fats or reduce dairy to support their metabolism. So it would be very different things that are on the top of the list for different people. Um, and we at Sage are very, very serious about meeting people where they are and supporting them with recommendations that apply um, not only to their condition and their constitution, their health, but also to their life circumstance. So um, if they're, you know, not able to stick with something, it's, it's not great. And if you're eating kale all day long, but you're really mad about it, that's actually not healthy, right? So one person may need to just focus on stopping drinking diet soda all day and focus on hydration, whereas another person might have the bandwidth and space in their life to really take on an anti-inflammatory diet. But what's most important is that we're able to stick with it, right? And that we have the support to do so. So a side note about hydration is that what we really want to get in is half your weight in ounces each day of fluids. So that looks like you take your weight, you divide it in half, and that number in ounces of fluid is how much we should be getting in every day. So I, I usually have it with me, but I don't right now. I have my water bottle. It has the time of day on it, which I find much easier, a glass water bottle, than, um, than counting ounces. But yeah. So another um, pillar of health is movement and exercise. And so um, we want to incorporate movement consistently. Being sedentary has been shown to not be good for fertility. I think that that sort of goes without saying, but I also know that people are really concerned about overdoing it, which is entirely possible. You know, athletes tend to stop menstruating and there's a reason for that. So we don't want to under-exercise or over-exercise. And so a happy medium usually looks like about four times a week doing about 50 to 70 percent of your maximum endurance and um and so i think a rule of thumb is if you can hold a conversation during exercise that is going to be um key. That's going to be the sweet spot there. So we're looking for consistency over endurance. And I personally recommend conscious movements where you can have time to reset your mind, like yoga and qigong or just being in nature in general. Rest is a key element to health. It's where our bodies rejuvenate and um, you know reset and really heal. So we recommend getting at least eight hours of sleep a night, if not nine. And if you're struggling with insomnia, we can help that with acupuncture as well. Um, and then here we are at stress management as a pillar of health once again. And um, there is uh, a method that I like where we take small steps in an ongoing way and incorporate them into our lives so that they are more on automatic than anything else so that when we do have big challenges that come in, we can really rely on those. We usually don't learn new things in the middle of a crisis, but things that we've incorporated, we can call on easily. Um, so I think we've all been like watching Zoom forever <laughs> now. And so I'd like to do a really quick exercise with everybody just to get our bodies moving and show you an example of how to do how to do this. In traditional Chinese medicine, there's a connection between your heart and your reproductive organs. And this can be seen in Western medicine as well, of course, where the heart 
controls circulation. But a more poetic view is that the heart is nourishing the home of the baby. So where our attention goes, so do our resources. So let's take a minute together to just rub our hands, get some circulation in there, feel the warmth. And I'm going to move through this quickly, but try it with me. And then you're going to rub up the back of the arm and down the front, just on one arm. And continue doing that in a circular motion a few times, connecting with your body. And then switch over to the other side, up the outside, down the inside of the arm. Yeah. Good. And then we're going to tap with a loose fist on our chest, including that heart center, right? Tap in there, uh, opening up the chest and the heart. And we can take the flat part of the wrist or the fist and rub our back. So we're rubbing the lower part of the rib cage where the kidneys live. Do a little tap, uh, wake up the kidney area. Rub our hands together one more time so you get that warmth bringing your attention there. And then place one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly. And let's take three deep cleansing breaths together. Good. So and you can take your time with that a little bit more, but I wanted to just take a reset and show you how quickly um, feeling better is accessible to us. Okay, so supplements are a great um, thing and there more and more information is really coming out about how they can benefit fertility. Um, so it's just a wonderful tool that we can utilize, but we wanna be very specific and help us take things that help fertility, but really things that are tailored to us. So that's where us creating a plan can really be beneficial for you. In addition to really utilizing high quality products that are, are tested for purity um, is incredibly important. Okay, so let's talk about how acupuncture can specifically support your fertility journey. Okay, um, and Heather, you're gonna have to uh, help me be mindful of the time here. Okay. So the research on acupuncture in conjunction with IVF, as well as our clinical experience, suggests that acupuncture can be beneficial at any stage of this process. Even the week of a frozen embryo transfer with a pre-transfer treatment and a post-transfer treatment, um, compared to no, no treatment at all, has been shown to improve success rates by up to 30%. Okay, it's also um, shown to help with IVF related anxiety. So very, very useful. And in 2002, Paulus et al. first published the results of a randomized controlled trial investigating the effect of acupuncture on pregnancy rates and IVF patients. And in this trial, 160 women underwent IVF were um, introduced to acupuncture as well. And acupuncture was administered before and after the embryo transfer. So higher pregnancy rates were found in the acupuncture group at 42.5% compared to the group that did not have acupuncture at 26.3%. So to be clear, acupuncture, like any mechanical intervention, such as surgery, is challenging to study, right? Because there's no inert um, intervention where the provider and the patient can be blinded, like we can do in a pharmaceutical study where they can just give a sugar pill. You know? um, so additionally, just like you know, one injection of gonadotropins is not enough to adequately stimulate one's ovaries, acupuncture is not a one and done treatment. So the number of treatments you receive can actually make a big difference. And while one treatment of acupuncture session was enough to improve markers of glucose in a study with PCOS patients, um, a series of eight sessions in the course of four weeks was needed to improve blood flow to the uterus or uterine artery perfusion. Uh, in 
observational research, we see significant differences in live births, which is of course the ultimate goal between patients who attend more acupuncture compared to those who have very few or none at all. Um, Magarella and Credendi carried out a retrospective clinical study that included nine to 12 treatments. And so it's a higher rate and they reported higher pregnancy rates of 51 versus 36%, as well as lower miscarriage rates of 8% versus 20% um, compared to the control group. So, so that's, that's pretty inspiring. And interestingly, the risk of getting acupuncture has been uh, studied extensively, and it's been shown to be very safe, especially when given by a trained acupuncturist, as opposed to another uh, medical professional who's had minimal training. So remember that acupuncture is a physiological intervention. It's a physical intervention. So we could think of it sort of like exercise, where every single time you exercise, you will absolutely get health benefits. But if you exercise several times a week, over the course of a couple months, your health will really be moved forward. So at SAGE, we recommend getting acupuncture two times a week for the month leading up to either an egg retrieval or an embryo transfer if your situation necessitates moving forward with the IVF immediately or you're already in the process of an IVF. And then taking the growth of the follicles that we talked about in mind, we recommend three cycles of preparation if you're just preparing naturally or you are experiencing delays but no known causes um, and no other real reason to, to expedite that process, or you've had a failed IVF cycle or cycles and you really need a moment to recover and nourish your body and get it ready for the next cycle. So, and we're always available for um, a consultation to discuss which route is best for you. Okay, so then our fertility program continues to support you through um, that delicate first trimester and helps your body adjust to being pregnant and um, helps with symptoms like morning sickness and anxiety and physical discomforts. And then after the first trimester, you can graduate into our pregnancy support program where we continue to help with issues like back pain and digestion and insomnia. Um, and then later on, if, if you happen to be have a breach presentation, we also do labor preparation and postpartum support. So the best way to find a provider is always word of mouth, right? Still. And so talk to your friends and see if, if they have any recommendations. Talk to your doctor. Ask who they have experience working with. And then really sort of do your research and read people's bios and their credentials. Anyone who is working as an acupuncturist in the state of Texas should have a minimum of a four-year master's degree, as well as be licensed through the Texas Medical Board and the National Certification for Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine. And then beyond that, there are some people that are ABORM certified, which is a board that I actually sit on. And we certify a select group of people to sit a board exam and then follow up with fertility-specific continuing education every single year. Awesome. Um, so it's, oh, yeah. I said, awesome. That was great. Um, oh, good. Just wanted to see if there was any sort of um, last minute things to wrap up. I hate to to cut anything short, but we just yeah. had a tight schedule and this was super, super helpful. Um, I like the Absolutely. exercise and everything. So um, thank you. Is there anything sure. we can leave our, our folks with today? Um, yeah. So I think people are really curious what acupuncture feels like. And it feels really good. People look forward to getting acupuncture and they leave feeling reset and um, ready to take on the challenges of, of their life and their fertility journey. Um, my mission was to create a space where people could feel safe and have a sanctuary. And so that's what we've done at Sage. Awesome. And some feedback that the exercise was wonderful. So um... oh, good. Awesome. And we will also show, since we didn't have time for the video at the end, we'll also go ahead and make sure everybody sees that here after. And uh, if you guys Great. have any comments or feedback for um, Sadie, by all means, put it in the window or message us and we will pass that along to her for sure. 
Perfect. Yes. Always reach out with any questions. Thank you so much. You have a great rest of your Sunday and thank you for, per for, for helping and participating with us. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Have a great day.